Hello friends, welcome back to this channel. So in the earlier session, we show what is CloudFront, and then we show how we can use it in our S3 bucket, right? So now in this session, we are going to discuss about some advanced options for CloudFront that can come up in the exam. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. So, first let's talk about multiple origins in the CloudFront, and then origin groups. So for example, you may want to redirect and route to different kinds of origins based on the content type of the path being passed to CloudFront. For example, you have a path for images, a path for the API and a path for everything else. In which case in CloudFront you can set different cache behaviors with a path being determined in. For example, if you have this slash API slash star path, you can say that you need to have a response from the origin being your application load balancer. But, in case, anything else is requested maybe everything else is steady content, then, you should get that content, out of your S3 buckets. And so, as we can see, we have defined the multiple origins, based on the path being in Amazon CloudFront, right? Now here, we can also set up origin groups, and this is a different use case. This is to, increase high availability and, do failover, in case one origin has failed. So an origin group consists of one primary and one secondary origin. And if the primary origin fails, then CloudFront will try to fail over to the second origin. So let's take an example. Say we have CloudFront and we have an origin group made of two EC2 instances. The first one is going to be our primary origin and the second one is going to be our secondary origin. So Amazon CloudFront will send a request to the first EC2 instance. And in case there is an error, coming back from the EC2 instance, then Amazon platform will retry the same request on the origin B, and hopefully, this one will respond with an OK status code. So there is a failover happening. You can also use this with Amazon S3. So in this example, if we use S3 and CloudFront with origin groups, we can get to region level high availability and disaster recovery. So let's have a look. We have an origin group made of two S3 buckets. The first one is going to be A, primary origin, and the second one's going to be our secondary origin. And if these S3 buckets are in different regions, then we can set up replication between these buckets. So all the content of origin A will be replicated into origin B, right? Now if Amazon CloudFront sends a request and we get an error from the first S3 bucket, because maybe there is a region level outage, then CloudFront will try the same request onto another S3 buckets in another region that will have all the data as the first one because of the replication. And therefore this one should hopefully reply with an OK status. So it just gives you a great service and architecture to get regional level disaster recovery for Amazon, OK? Now, let's talk about pricing and price classes. So we know that CloudFront edge locations are all around the world. But because they're all around the world, the cost of data out per edge location will vary. And so, here is a table. So as you can see, based on the continent or geographic region that the edge location is in then you will have a different pricing. So if you look at this table, if you look at Mexico, United States and Canada, the first 10 terabytes is going to cost $0.085 per gigabytes. But if you have the same edge location in India, is going to be about twice the cost at 0 0.170 dollar per gigabyte of data transferred and so on and the more data is transferred out of cloudfront the lower the cost so if you transfer over 5 petabytes of data out of cloudfront you're only going to pay 0 0.02 dollar out of the united states okay so the idea is that from the left side to the right hand side you have a higher cost which brings us to the price classes so you have a choice you can make and you can reduce the number of edge locations around the world that is going to be used for your CloudFront distribution in order to do cost reduction. And there are three price classes available. There is the price class all, which is giving you all regions and obviously the best performance but it's going to cost you a little bit more money because as you can see for example, an edge location in India will cost more than an edge location in the United States. You can do the price class 200 which gives you most regions but excludes the most expensive regions. And the press class 100, to only get the least expensive regions. And this is summarized in this table, right? 
Now finally, let's talk about field level encryption. So this is to protect sensitive information through the application stack. And this adds an additional level of security alongside using encryption at the edge close to user. So the idea is that anytime a sensitive information is sent by the user, the edge location is going to encrypt it and they will be only be able to be decrypted if someone has access to a private key. And therefore, this will be using asymmetric encryption. So how does it work? Well, in the post requests being made to Amazon CloudFront, then they will be a set of fields that we want to be encrypted up to 10 fields, and they will specify the public key to encrypt them with. So now, let's go through an example. We have a client taking over HTTPS to edge location, which will be forwarding it to the CloudFront service using HTTPS again. And then, it will go all the way to the origin using HTTPS through application load balancer, which will forward all the data using HTTPS to your web server. So everything is encrypted in flights, but we want to specify field level encryption. So say for example, that our user is sending us some credit card information. We specify that we want to have it field level encryption for the credit card information. And therefore the edge location will encrypt that field using a public key. So now the data being passed from the edge location to Amazon CloudFront to the origin will have the credit card information being encrypted by the public key. And so the information will be passed all along until the web server. And then the web server will have access to the private key and we'll be able to decrypt that encrypted field using the private key to decrypt and get the credit card number. As we can see, all along the stack, none of the CloudFront location and application load balancer will have the opportunity to decrease that field. Only the web server will need you have some custom application logic to decrypt that field, okay? So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below, I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.